Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the CT Sports Talent Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is going to be an awesome preview as far as kind of the games that we have to come for this program, the Watertown football squad. And I've got the forgotten five. There are six here because all of them contribute, obviously. Uh, this is the offensive line for the Watertown football team. First, I'll start out with the senior right tackle, Julian Guerrero. Say hello. Uh, I also have the senior right guard, Sean Stoddard. Say hello. Hello. I've got the senior center, Aiden Spagnoletti. Say hello. Hello. I've got the senior left guard, Jeremy Charbonneau. Say hello. Here. Hello. Great, great last name, by the way. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> also got the junior left tackle, Lucas Marcil. Say hello. Hello. And also have Edwin Vasquez Sr. as well. And what's your position on the line? Left tackle. Okay. Just want to make sure I get that in there. So, fellas, really appreciate you coming on. This is awesome. And I also want to give a shout out to your offensive line coach, Bobby Rose, who came up with the Forgotten Five. I think that's really cool. And that's something that, you know, typically when you think about in the paper, it's it's always the offensive stats, occasionally some defense, but you never see offensive linemen really get a lot of love. So this is going to be an awesome, awesome episode. I'll start out with, you know, with Julian first. Obviously, turning the page for the guys that are seniors, and that's the bulk of you, except for Lucas, right? You think about your first year, you know, when you guys are back in 21 or such, you guys were seven and four, four and six, you go five and five last year in the regular season, then you make a run, you know, and talking with Stank over the last couple of years before what you guys did making the run that you did, I felt like you guys kept knocking on the door. Eventually you were going to kind of barrel through it. And you guys did that, right? I mean, did you feel like last year was kind of like a build up to that or just take me into that? Um, like a build up into this year, correct, or just overall because you guys were knocking on that door to finally make make some noise. So ever since like sophomore year, we all started. We there was two seniors mm -hmm. or three seniors, and we I started at right tackle. Edwin started a couple games at tackle. Spags started uh some games at uh, center. Jeremy mm -hmm. too. We knew that we were building into, we were building into coming up for our juniors and senior year. Mm -hmm. Just like Brady in the backfield, like what he did versus Thanksgiving in the last three games, put up like eight touchdowns, zero interceptions. Adam mm -hmm. Passenger had a couple touchdowns catching. We knew we were going to be great, but we had to put work in it. And every single day in the off season, we did that and it showed I'll go to Sean next. Obviously, when you think about offensive lines, right, the continuity, being able to play together and almost, you know, almost like all of you have the same brain, right? You're thinking the same thing, knowing the calls, knowing where Brady, especially with him being so mobile, he's going to go left, right, or so on and so forth. But being able to be with your brothers, right, for as long as you have, is it almost like you guys are thinking together each and every game? Yeah, I'd say um... – a lot of people say you know, offensive lines like a well-oiled machine. I say like we we definitely reflect that. I say like we are most of most of the time on the same page, mm -hmm. um, and I just think it's kind of beginning to show like we've been uh, like one unit pretty much. I'll go to Aiden next. Looking at last year, right? You guys were five and five. You were just able to get into the playoffs over the last couple of years. You kind of were just short from that. When you found out that you were able to make the playoffs, I mean, what was the reaction like in the locker room? What was it like? Or wherever you guys were at the time? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was – I remember it was Thanksgiving Day, and the group chat was blowing up right after the game. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, all the teams that had to lose lost. And, like, we might actually have a shot getting into the state championship or the state playoffs. Mm -hmm. And we were all just so excited. We were nervous. And – Coach is like sending out the practice schedule for the next week. And yeah. we were just so hyped up and we went to Granby and we got the job done. You know, it's funny that you mentioned Granby. I'll go to Jeremy next. They were the top seed. Now they've struggled in terms of winning games as a top seed, but you guys were coming in, you know, it was funny. It was like, really like kind of like the Cowboys and the Packers last year, right? Granby was favored probably by a crap ton of points. And you guys went to their house as did the Packers and were able to win the game and able to advance. I mean, what was your guys, because again, it's a long drive. It's like an hour and a half, something like that, because you're going up near Mass. Um, what was it like as far as going into that game? Was it kind of like house money? 
what was it like for you guys? Yeah, so I actually didn't play that game because I was injured, but I was there at practice and I saw how much work they've been putting in and I was there on the bus there and everything still. So I saw how locked in they were in going into that week and I just knew that they knew that everyone doubted us and that the picks, when the picks came in, everyone got even more hyped that everybody picked Brand B over us and we just knew that we were coming in there to really make our name for ourselves and put Grand B down. I'll go to Lucas next. The run that you guys had, right? I know just coming up short, you know, half a yard short as far as being able to. And I, I agree with the play call, that, by the way, going for on that fourth down. I was saying it from the press box when we were calling the game. I think everybody at, from Watertown that came to the game or was listening was saying, you go for it, right? You probably have one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Obviously, you were that close. Go for it. Um, coming up that short, what was it like as far as with the offseason? I mean – are you guys still thinking about that? Have you moved on? What's it been like? No, nah, so definitely we use it as a lot of motivation. We put in a ton of work mm -hmm. and we are obviously able to get our summer practices this year for the first time, like all summer. And it was just showing up every day and getting work in. I'll go to Edwin next. Uh, speaking of, you know, the, the out of season uh, practices. And I think it's awesome that you guys were able to have that because then it, it, it allows teams to be able to build more. Obviously, the young guys were able to kind of come through and know what it's like. Obviously, this year, you guys, instead of being the hunted, you're the hunters, right? Or the hunters, you're the hunted. Kind of have to reverse that. So having the target on your guys' back, you guys took care of business in week one, it's not going to get any easier when you're playing the Ansonias, the Naugatucks, the Holy Cross later on. Those games will be on the radio. Looking forward to that. Um, how is How did the team respond knowing that the philosophy and the mindset's a little different than past years? Yeah, so this offseason, our, our like team motto is one more. So like one more play, one more yard, one more set of conditioning, one more everything because that's all we needed to win the state championship. And now it's all about like, we know where we could be, and that's that's the standard now is state playoffs. I'll go to Julian next. The standard, obviously, that Edwin just mentioned, is it heightened a little bit more? Is it was it already high to begin with? Because I know, in, in you know, living in Watertown for years, football is obviously one of the you know that there's soccer, there's softball. I know baseball is very very good as well, but football is right up there as well. And I know it's held to a high pedestal. So what was it like as far as? Last year coming up short and then knowing that, okay, let's kind of get the job done now. Cause I'm sure there's been conversations about that too. Um, definitely. We thought we were a better team and we knew we were going to do a lot better, especially like we knew we could go to Seymour and beat Seymour. We weren't going to get like last year, they put up 28 points on us unanswered. Mm -hmm. We came, there was a break in between and it was a, cause there was lightning. And I said, after we scored 13 points unanswered, it was a 28 to 13, we, but after that break, we just looked like a, such a better team after that. I yeah. thought like something in our brain switched. Like we knew we had to play better. And ever since then, we knew we could play with these, we could play with Ansoni. We knew we could play with Nagata mm -hmm. and um and Holy Cross, especially after that one point uh, loss too. Um they lost players and we didn't. And our players I think are better than their players. And we, we I think we could go play Ansoni and Nagata and go beat them at their own places this year. Definitely. I'll go to Sean next to kind of piggyback off what Julian just said, right? I mean, to to kind of, you know, with you guys moving up, right? You're not in double S, you're an M now, so a little bit tough for competition. You know, you want to get off to a strong start, not have to kind of get yourself out of the hole, right? As you guys did previously in last year and being in double S. Um, if you want to have aspirations of winning a title, you've got to beat the Holy Crosses, the Naugatucks, the Ansonias, right? Because that kind of is a precursor of what you're going to see. Because Class M, I don't know if you guys have looked, you probably have, North Haven and Hand, and I could go on and on and on. It's a gauntlet. So not to look too far ahead, because you still got to take care of business the week of the games. But are you guys kind of chomping at the bit to kind of maybe shut some of the people up that are saying, yeah, we want to put Watertown as one of the best teams, but they haven't beaten Ansonia. They haven't beaten Naugatuck. They lost the Holy Cross by one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I definitely think we're all anticipating those bigger games just because we want to be able to prove ourselves. We want to be able to kind of put our names on a map, sort of. Um, mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of people they don't favor us in a lot of games and we just go out there we do our bet we perform and we um we just grind it out and we you know results come and from our hard work Aiden, I'll go to you next. Do you feel like in a lot of ways that even after the season that you guys had, and I don't know what the talk is amongst the kids around the league. I just know coaches. I know coaches respect the heck out of the Watertown team, especially the run that you guys had. People you know, were rooting for you, especially team because an NBL team getting to a championship game, usually it's, it's just Ansonia, right? And then seeing you guys be able to get there, it was awesome. Um, how – how difficult is it to ignore the noise on the outside and just take care of business on the inside? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the hype's going to be bigger this year around us and people are going to be watching our games. And so I think we just, like Julian said, we just need to go in and take care of business in the regular season. We need to not let the noise get to us. And we just need to be that same team that we were last year. I'll go to Jeremy next. You guys, and I know when I had Stanko on my preview show, he talked to me about the depth of the Watertown offensive line, which you guys have. Now, in defense, too, same thing. But he talked about how with some of the injuries that happened last year, and you spoke about your injuries as well, but being able to have that depth. If, for example, if somebody was to go down, with the experience that was had and being able to see and be a part of it, do you feel like that helps? Because I, I feel like offensive lines in high school football, if you lose a couple kids, it's like a drastic drop. But you guys, it's it's not like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, definitely. I know myself, I got hurt during the Naugatuck game. So after that, um, one of, we had a couple switch arounds, but it ended up being our friend Joe Bunce who played at the right guard, I believe. And then Edwin also, he didn't play that season because of his ACL injury. So that's two of our like starters that played sophomore year that weren't playing. So it was really nice to get in people like Lucas, who he's a sophomore, a junior, and he has so much experience playing in these games and so does Joe Bunce, so that if anybody ever gets hurt from now, it's kind of more like an easy, they'll just drop right in and we can still play football. Like last year, um, Joe, he never played offensive line in his life. He's our middle linebacker and he just picked it up and he ran with it. And he had a couple great games and he played the entire um, um, championship game. I'll go to Edwin next. Missing the season, right? I mean, I'm sure it was obviously killing you. That goes without saying, right? Especially with the final game. And I know you wanted to be a part of it. Does that kind of add or add it during the offseason more, I don't want to say pressure, but motivation, right, to make sure that you were at peak performance to be able to make sure that you didn't miss a beat when you rejoin the offensive line? Does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely does because not being able to play an entire season, it's like mm-hmm. it just like kills you. And now it's like I got to go out there and perform even better to show that I like I can go out there and compete even – with missing a season, I didn't, I didn't lose anything. I'll go to Lucas next. Being a part of the offensive line, and obviously there's a lot of talent in this room, does it feel like in a competitive way each of you are kind of competing, not against, but for, right? Like if, if Julian's having a great game and no one's able to get by him, you want to make sure that no one gets by you being on the opposite end because obviously if someone's getting by you, then someone has to help you, and then there's weakness on the chain. You know what I mean? Like that competitiveness. How cool is that, Lucas? It's great. It's great knowing that I have a um, four other guys that are just putting are just putting just as much work as, in as me, if not more. Mm-hmm. And knowing that I have people to pick me up if I do bad one play, and they're giving me more motivation for the next play, and then we go out and perform. I'll go to Julian next. Give some love to your offensive line coach. He came up with the forgotten five. I think that's an awesome quote. And it, obviously, you can go into how long he's been with Watertown and what he's met. So just kind of give him his flowers here. Bobby Rose. I, I've known that guy since, um, I don't know, maybe I was like eight years old. And okay. when I was a freshman and I was playing with my brother, he was out for the first couple of games. But yeah. our center, he was like um, – he was hurt, but like he was like getting back into it. Mm-hmm. And it was at our uh, banquet or um, a fundraiser that he came up to me and he goes – Julian, you're going to come down with the varsity team. And, and it just like shook me up a little bit. I was a freshman. I was, I was like, I wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. And then we went out for his Waterbury career and he wasn't hundred percent. And I got to start that game. And it was just like, I just give all my props to Bobby. I always text him. I always, he's just my, one of my boys, I think. Mm-hmm. He's not even my coach. He's one of my boys. So I, I, I praise Bobby a lot. 
I'll go to Sean next. And I know you have another guy who originally was the head coach of St. Paul and now has come back home. It, you know, take me into, you know, having uh, Joe Cianciola back, right? I mean, he he played for Watertown, went to Springfield. You know, he's a Watertown guy. His dad played for Watertown. How cool is that to have him back, you know, after what you guys were able to accomplish last year? Um, I haven't actually really seen him too much around, but – Okay. When I when I do see him, around, it's really nice having that um, kind of more veteran kind of like mm-hmm. his mentality. I guess I don't know if that makes sense, but no, it does. Yeah. No, it makes sense. I got. I yeah. get what you're saying there. Like I'll go to oh, pretty much what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, I got you. I'll go to Aiden next. Looking into now week two, right? Obviously, you know it's the week before Aunt Sonia. Obviously, you guys are juiced up for that game, but you got to take care of business and who you're playing in week two. What's the mindset as you're going into this week? Our mindset this week is just focus on this game, you know, like just take it one week at a time. Like Coach Stank always says, we got to go one and know every week. Mm-hmm. And that's just our goal this week. And, you know, if we have a good performance this week, we're just going you know, to hope to carry that on against Ansonia and Nogata. I'll go to Jeremy next. What is being able to not just – protect Gamby, but being able mm-hmm. to, to see the kid play. I mean, his his progression every year has been like up and up and up, right? I mean, it's it's like what, what like basically what can't this kid do, right? I mean, you think about the quarterback, size, arm, speed, the whole nine, brain and everything. What's it like being able to have a teammate like him, but also someone that is, let's be honest, and thankful he's on your team and not on somebody else's? Oh, I'm definitely thankful that he's on our team. There's definitely a lot of plays, like even just in Seymour, where we had our protection and we all kick stepped, and there was no one. Some people were open, but it was a risky throw. And I just remember him. He tucked it in and he took it all the way to the house. He's such a good quarterback in that way, where he sees the whole field. And um, we had another play. It was just a simple play, and everyone we put a hat on a hat, and he just really he runs his legs, and you're not going to tackle him through an arm tackle. So. He's just a really good team leader as well. He always guides us. He helps the offensive line. He loves us. He knows that he gives us appreciation. Like he always talks about us and says that we're, we help him a lot. So we really just appreciate him and what he does for us. I'll go to Lucas next. Now this Watertown team is unlike a lot of teams. Naugatuck graduated a lot and Sonia graduated a lot. Holy cross. We turned a good amount. A couple of kids went prep, but for the most part, they, they returned their quarterback and the now, you know, sophomore wide receiver graves and so on. But you guys returned almost everybody. A couple of kids graduated, but still the core is still there. So being able to have that, I mean, does it feel like in a lot of ways that it's like now you're just continuing last year and not having to wait for the younger kids to, or in the case of playing, being able to kind of get things in step. Does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely does. Um, having them when I was a freshman and them sophomores, it was great. They taught me so much. Yeah. And that's honestly where I learned most of my things is from them, not even like a ton of our coaches. They were great, but I would just try and repeat what they were doing. Yeah. And that helped me learn a ton. And I think that's what I'm just going to keep going for the rest of my years is just try and help out younger guys as much as I can, just like how they did to me. I'll go to Edwin next. Now, obviously, Watertown is not talked about in the same light as the Naugatucks, the Ansonias in terms of coverage it's I, again like let's be honest it sways that way people are going to go there watertown for whatever reason maybe doesn't get i don't want to say coverage because i know the rep am does as best as they can but in terms of i guess the 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 national media here in the state of connecticut whatever you want to call it people don't think of watertown they're not going to go there do you feel like you guys as a group being seniors i know you're a junior lucas and you're going to maybe help this as well trying to put Watertown back on the map as they were back in the seventies and the eighties and even the nineties too, when they were making a lot of noise. Yeah. So I think that a big part of like, obviously the postseason, a lot of people were counting us out, not saying we're going to win. And we just showed them that we can hang with these big teams. And even in playoffs, we can hang with all these other teams from far away in the state. And Mm. that's also, we're continuing that this year, just like, like you said, putting Watertown on the map to, so that like, People know, like, hey, these guys, they they know what they're doing. They can hang. I'll go to Julian next. Putting Wharton on the map, I mean, does that – because I want to carry on to that. And, that, you know, if anybody else wants to answer besides Julian here, you can after Julian's done. Um, 
how much does it mean to you? I know if the other guys will answer, they can speak to their part. But for you, Julian, how much does it mean? Because your brother played for Watertown. Obviously, you guys live in Watertown in the whole nine. That being able to get this program to a championship and win it. Obviously, winning a championship is awesome. But being able to say Watertown championship, how how much does that mean to you? It means a lot, um, especially with my like brother. There's always been a competition between us for four years apart. We yeah. always, whenever he's home, it's always I'm better, you're better. But he's always helped me too. And just for me, like in the whole line, all Watertown, putting Watertown on the map was a great thing. It gave us great exposure. And just like look, when we played Joe Barlow in the playoffs and we looked into the crowd, we saw all those alumni that were there from Olden Gate, the 86 team that won the state championship. We thought like, wow, we could do this when we're older watching other kids maybe put the rails for Watertown Pop Warner, get more kids to come play and make this um, just group even bigger and better than it is right now. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to carry on to that? Yeah, um, I'll carry on too. So, uh, but another thing is that like we have, all of us were born in Watertown and we have like a deep Watertown history. Like all of our families are like Watertown. So like my family, I, my freshman year, I only joined my half year of football. So we were never a big football family, but now, I mean, they're right with everybody else's parents. Like we're all into it. All of our parents get along. And it's just like a really big group of senior parents that like all like each other and stuff like that. And another thing going off what Julian was saying <clears throat> about um, us, <laughs> sorry, I just blanked on another. Yeah, no, you're good. Don't worry about it. You're good. But yeah, um, just again, deep Watertown history. We're all from mm -hmm. Watertown. We play for Watertown and putting Watertown on the map and again, paving the way for Pop Warner kids. Like our freshman group this year was like nothing we've seen in the past two years. Like it's way bigger. I feel like people when they're at our like middle school, they like, oh, I'm going to Caner. We have a couple of schools that they could go to that are in our region. But um, mm -hmm. a lot of kids go to Watertown just to play football. So, Jeremy, you, you mentioned now you joined football late. So amongst your family, who gets the most hyped as far as when they're watching the games? Like who gets who gets oh. juiced up amongst your family? Definitely my dad. He um he's been at I'm pretty sure every single one of my games, even the games I didn't play and cheering on Watertown. He's always standing in the stands right next to everybody else. He's cheering. Um, my mom obviously loves it, but he's really just all for Watertown. That's very cool. That's awesome to hear as far as the family. I knew, obviously, you know, Watertown, even though it's a, a small town, I call it H2O town because Watertown. But you guys, you know, the family, when it comes to whatever sport it is, it's always for the kids, for the program, regardless if it's a struggling time or a very you know successful time, that the parents are going to do the best they can. And obviously the kids, their sons or daughters do see that. Uh, one more question I'll have for Sean, Aiden, and Lucas, as well as Edwin as well. Um, first, I'll go to Sean. Um, what would you say for yourself as far as the growth of this offensive line? Do you feel like that this offensive line is still not done growing yet? Is there still more to be had? I know the pancake blocks and everything else you guys do is awesome. And obviously the protecting of Gamby and he's not getting touched much. Um, is there still growth to be had with this offensive line? Definitely. Um, I feel Seymour was just kind of like a stepping stone mm -hmm. a little bit. I feel like we all can improve on you know, something. There's something everyone can improve on. I feel like we are all willing and we all want to just get better and be the absolute best players and the best line that we could be. And we just, this just, this just beginning. I'll go to Aiden next. Basically kind of same question, but in terms of the growth of the offensive line, for you specifically, what could you do on your side of the line being the center? Because you're kind of really, really, in a lot of ways, the quarterback de facto on the line, right? You're kind of making the calls and you're kind of making sure everybody is in the proper alignment, making sure if you see something, somebody's coming up on the line or doing whatever pre-snap, post-snap stuff. What would you say your growth can be going forward? So, yeah, definitely just, like, watching more film and, like, just fine-tuning everything at practice every week. Like, we work on the little things every week. Like, we have drills for everything. Like, we're always just going to hash out whatever we got to do, and we're always going to grow together. And we just got, like, such good chemistry that, you know, we could just grow together. I'll go to Lucas next. Was there a moment last year or maybe even in the Seymour game or what kind – what was the one game where – 
somebody on the line, you could, anybody amongst here who had a great, great block or whatever it was, and you got really hyped after the play. Is there anyone in particular amongst the line, Lucas, that you could name? I mean, any pancake block, any any block that someone's driving them downfield, anything that someone's barely moving, it just gets everyone so hyped. Any any block that there's such a big hole that Brady or Noah or Caballo could run right through and it's a big touchdown game, it gets everyone so hyped. Was there anyone in particular? Any 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 one more or is it just all kind of grouped in? Yeah, I can't think of one. I think it's everyone just grouped in. Okay. That's a good answer. You should be a politician. Good for you. (laughs) So I'll go to Edwin. Last question for you. You're going to wrap it up here. Um, Obviously with being, you know, with the seniors and such, I know Lucas being the only junior here, you know, not to make it seem like, you know, things are winding down, but your high school careers are winding down, right? I mean, it's the last first game, last out of season, off season practice, the whole nine. So how difficult is it to kind of keep that in mind, knowing that I want to enjoy this? but also you're competing because there's a mission is to get back to wherever the games are going to be, hopefully in the championship and being able to win a title. So how difficult is that? Yeah, it's definitely in the back of our mind. And, you know, me personally, I think about it all the time. Like, you know, last first game, last scrimmage, last, last, all that stuff. And it's just, it's definitely in the back of my my mind, but I just think about it as, you know, I got to go into this game, do what I got to do, and just make sure that, like, when I leave this field, I could say that I left it all out there and did all I could do. Great answer, how are you? So, Julian, Sean, Aiden, Jeremy, Lucas, Edwin, really appreciate you all coming on. The Forgotten Five, I'll say Forgotten Six because I'll add the extra lineman in there, too. Why not? Really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys next week against Ansonia. It's on Thursday. That's going to be a great game. Good luck in your game this week, and I'll be seeing you guys pretty soon. Thank you so much. Always. I'll wrap things up in the CT Sports Town Show. Next time, stay safe. Mary CT Stamps Connect. Get talent and find them all. Do the shit, everybody, and be well.